So I want to take an opportunity to share um, a bit of X's and O's from the Hawksmen over the Clippers on uh, Tuesday evening. As we all know, uh, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George did not play in this game, but I noted on Twitter more than once that Clippers played an excellent uh, defensive game uh, here. Um, now what you're looking at is Hawks Timberwolves, so um, I'll explain why we're pulling up a, a play from, from that game. Um, but the Clippers just threw a lot of really sound, good defense at the Hawks. And then in the fourth quarter, we saw a pretty rare um, example of uh, coaching staffs kind of throwing adjustments at one another and reacting to those adjustments and going with counters to those adjustments. Rare for a regular season game anyway. You'll see um, maybe a lot of that in a postseason game. But it was, for me, uh, I think, pretty rare to see that amount and that frequency of that dynamic in regular season games. So I wanted to, to dig in a little bit. And this is mostly built around uh, a play the Hawks have been using of late to try to close out games when they when they have a lead. This is not um, the point in the game uh, here versus the Timberwolves. We see that, but if you uh, kind of track this usage of this play, uh, fourth quarter versus the Timberwolves, they went to it uh, heavily. Same thing, fourth quarter versus the Pistons. And then last night they tried to use it to um, put the Clippers away. So this seems to be, for now at least, a play that they will heavily rely on uh, when they have a lead in the fourth quarter and want to put the play away. It's it's something they have a lot of confidence in. If you ask, well, they have so much confidence in it, why do they not run it when they're trying to catch up? And the reality is, is that I think this is the play that gives them the most confidence to be able to burn the shot clock down and consume some game clock and then quickly create a, a good look, which makes it even more valuable uh, when you have a lead and you're wanting to hit a couple of goals on an offensive possession, which is consume the game clock and score. Um, and so you, that doesn't mean they don't ever use it throughout the, the game, um, but it tends to be something right now we're seeing them go to very reliably late in the game, especially when they have a lead. So uh, I wanted to show an example before the Clippers game on Tuesday, just so you can kind of get a look. And, and, and maybe it might... Um, refresh your memory a little bit and, and and you might recall having seen this um i think we saw this most frequently before the game on tuesday with clippers um in that pistons and timberwolves uh game so here here's the play basically before um i put it in the motion here hunter will set a screen on um to trace the left on his defender uh, beasley here They'll move across to the right, and then the center, in this case, Collins, will step up and set up ball screen, which will allow Trey to work to his right where he's most effective. And that's basically uh, it. I don't know what they call this on the floor, so apologies for that. I'll try to uh, pick that up as, as I can, but I, I just don't have that information yet. Um, but quick look at how they this looked against the uh, Wolves. First screen, second screen, Trey in the paint, floater, no, he hasn't been making as many of those this year, but that one goes down. And here we see use of it against the Clippers in the third quarter. It'll look very familiar to you this time. Good one is that wing that sets that first screen on uh, Trey's defender, uh, Terrence Mann. Kind of a brush screen there, not much of one. He comes across to the right wing, just like on the previous possession. And then Capella steps up and sets that ball screen on Trace Defender here, Batum, and looks almost like an identical play there. Trey gets to his right-hand floater in the paint, and it goes down. Um, so the next time we look at this, we're going to be in the final five minutes of the fourth quarter. Um, it kind of starts in a little bit in a funny fashion here because Solomon Hill has his hands raised, and he's look back and, looking back at the coach's bench and asking, where do you want me? And this happens sometimes when the Hawks have a lineup where Hill is not at the four or the five. Here he's technically playing at three, I think is what I would call it, and Hunter's at the two. And so they finally help us, Hill recognize Niju in that left corner. So the Hawks set up the play. 
Hunter sets up to um, step forward towards man, uh, Trey's defender here. And what you're seeing here is kind of the first wrinkle where the Clippers are reacting to their readiness to see this play frequently down the stretch. And if you look at Hunter's defender there, which is Morris, he doesn't show any indication that he's going to follow Hunter across the floor to the other side, as we normally see. And Trey sees that this could be a switch. Now, man's not acting like this is going to be a switch. It could be a trap or some other form of double. Um, and it's, Trey doesn't do enough with the ball here to kind of let the play carry out so we can see what the actual plan was. But Trey reads this and just decides he's going to put up uh, a pretty long three. And nobody ever went with Hunter there. Trey misses the three. Um, and this is where you'll start to see the back and forth. This is kind of the first possession where you see, okay, the Clippers made an adjustment there. Don't know exactly what the full plan was, but it was definitely to not have Morris track across the floor with Hunter. And this is where you'll see the Hawks coaching staff um, start to help Trey and the team by offering wrinkles uh, to how they're executing on this play. So if the Hawks um, reaction here is, okay, if you're going to uh, trap tray or double tray. We're just going to put herder on the left side of the floor, um, which is typically um, kind of where Trey wants to start. And Trey does start on the left side of the floor here, just higher on the floor because of where herder is. And and as to make sure that Trey can get to a ball screen with his right hand, they just open up all of this space up here. As you can see, there's no wing here herder would be that wing in this case thus there's no defender over here with herder and trey has all this space to use capella gets the screen they get a shot from the right corner not the most accurate uh, pass from trey there which is unusual uh collins misses but that's a totally acceptable shot collins from the corner is uh in my opinion a good shot but you saw the hawks adjustment by not using that wing screen that typically comes ahead of the center screen. Just park the wing on the left and give Trey all that space. Now we come back the next possession and um, th this is after a timeout. And you'll see this time that Harder, Herder is not just parked over here on the left. He's back uh, showing that he's going to set up in the play and that it looks similar to where he's, he would step up and set the screen on Jackson so that Trey could work left and then Capella could step up and set the screen for Trey to work back right. Um, but the adjustment here is that instead of Herder starting closer to here and Trey closer to here, they pulled him all the way almost to the very middle of the offensive half court, um, which is going to cut down the amount of space that the Clippers would have to use to interfere with Trey being able to get back to Capella. Now, the Clippers are very well organized on this possession. And as you uh, watch this play out, one thing you're going to notice is that Serge Ibaka, who is an excellent defensive anchor and an ex excellent backline defensive communicator, is organizing them for this whole possession. And I want you to see here very specifically, look at him communicating with man who's over here in the corner. Um, there um, on Collins. And so what Serge is basically telling him is, hey, we're going to push Trey to his left. He's gonna have to attack with his dribble uh, coming into your uh, area. And so be prepared to help on him. So Serge uh, already knows how this is gonna play out because of what Jackson is being told to do, how Kennard is being told to help on this play. And they want to force Trey to his left they're down eight, less than three minutes left. They have to have a stop. And he's yelling at man, hey, Terrence, we're going to have to need your help on Trey's drive, which is going to be over in your area here. So Herder kind of slips that. They push him into a man's area, and they get the block. Um, so that's a nice counter by the Clippers. 
there to recognize and diagnose what is going on and to force straight to his left. So what do the Hawks do? Now it picks up this position a little bit late, um, but Hunter has already set his screen. And what you notice here is that basically the Hawks have flipped this play. So instead of Trey starting left, the wing starting left, stepping up, setting the screen or slipping or ghosting the screen and moving right. And then the big, in this case, Collins, they're using as the uh, high screener, stepping up here, Trey coming right. They just go invert it. So Hunter started right, Trey started here. Hunter stepped up for the screen and now it's clearing out to the other side of the floor. So what the Hawks have said is, okay, well, if that's how you're going to handle this play, we're going to flip this play and let Trey get to his right. So that's what they want. They're, they're saying, if you're going to force him to attack with his dribble, we're going to set this up so it can be Trey attacking to his right instead of his left. Now, let me back this up just a little here. Sorry about that. And you, what you noticed there, if you noticed Jackson was looking back over his left shoulder and uh, trying to get some instruction here, and I can't tell which coach this is, but this looks like a defensive coach that's dealing out defensive instructions here. Um, and they're basically calling their defensive coverage on the fly here, which is really impressive and kind of a random regular season game. Uh, now it's a close game. They're down five here, a minute, eight seconds as I stopped it. They need to stop. And they said, okay, if you're going to flip this play Hawks and try to use our coverage that we use on the previous possession against us and allow Trey to get downhill to his right, we're not even going to clear out at all. We're just going to outright fully trap Trey. And so this is a really nice counter by the Clippers. And now Trey... And the Hawks have to kind of look at this and see what is available. So uh, Trey uses Hunter as kind of a, a relief valve there to get rid of the ball, get, get out of the double team. Kennard has to step up and account for Hunter at the three-point line. That opens Herter on the left wing for the three-point shot. Kennard tries to get there and close out, but Herter makes the shot. So fascinating stuff to me um if you look at you know if you need to kind of when you have a chance to maybe run this back and look at it one more time just the uh, x's and o x's and o's counter adjustment just play the hawks love to use to close out games when they're ahead clippers looked fully ready to account for that had multiple different ways to try to defend that and then you got into sort of a chess match between lloyd pierce and his staff and tyrone lu and his staff, and it was just fascinating to watch. What I would say here in summary is that the Clippers threw a lot at Trey, and he had a couple of tough possessions. He had that long miss. Um, he had that sort of um, not so um, precise pass to Collins in the corner. He had the block shot um, when he was attacking to his left. Maybe last season, um, Trey gets super frustrated and kind of can't stay on task quite as much. In this game, he stayed on task and he fought through the adversity and fought through all of the different things the Clippers were throwing at him. And in this position specifically, he just stayed under control, made the simple play, used Huntler as the uh, kind of outlet pass from the double team. The ball found its way to the open shooter herder and they got the basket. So this shows to me good progression by Trey dealing with a few tough possessions late in the game to stick with it, see this through to a win. It to me shows the Hawks coaching staff throwing little wrinkles to give them something a little bit different to work with to counter what the Clippers are throwing now at them. And so this was for me a super interesting fourth quarter from an X's and O's standpoint, from a coaching decision and adjustment standpoint. But maybe for Hawks fans, the most important thing was Trey had a couple of tough moments where the Clippers just threw a lot at him, a few possessions that didn't go well, but he stayed on task and was able to execute uh, the, just the next possession, just kind of move on to that next possession when something bad happens. That's probably the most important thing that we saw um, late in this game against Clippers on Tuesday.